Hiya folks, well I did uh, a little bit of work on my plant life support system outside which I'll, uh, I'll give a look at and I just thought I'd give a quick look at grow room as, I'm, as far as I am on it yet because I really want to get that going and I'll just give you a quick talk through what I've got here. So what I've got is I managed to get that painted up so it's nice and easy to keep clean. I brought everything in from outside, we're expecting, well we're expecting at least one degree uh, at the moment it's about 14 degrees outside, but you never know, could drop at any time and uh, if I'm at work there's nothing I can do, so I've got everything in. Uh, I brought this fig in, I think that might go back outside though in the part that I've just made, I've still got some more work to do on that. Two of these peppers are definitely going outside, uh, yeah two, I've got five, I thought I only had four, but I've got five. Two are definitely going outside, see how they're going in the unit. Uh, that's that tomato which I brought in which I'm going to try and see if we can get it to fruit in here just for fun uh, this is all set up now it's a bit of a pain that it's on floor because it's slow but what I'll probably do is pull that up. what I'll probably do is is block it halfway up until every, anything's big enough that I can just put them back on floor level I painted that as well and sealed it so that it's basically waterproof now this contraption here is a little trolley but I can put some pots on if I need to because last year I didn't have much built well last year that's that was my entire space that's inside there so this year I've got this area this area I'm just in putting a strip up here for put some lights on um, I've got these lights I've had these just running just to do uh, just to look after these and so some of this stuff's got to go back outside and all that little pepper I'm going to keep uh, my lemongrass obviously I'm keeping I'm still like on two, two ways what I'm going to do with kiwi whether to just bin it now but we'll see managed to recycle this it's a little drawer unit so it gives me a bit more storage down here they're um, ink cartridges um, so that gives me a bit of storage down here because this were all piled up where this worm bin is and piled up it's still uh, don't don't laugh this is tidy which I'm quite happy I didn't have to get rid of any any instruments <laughs> but yeah that's where I'm at a minute I'm gonna do a bit more work on it tonight and see how we get on and uh, hopefully we'll be growing some good stuff this year micro veg and other stuff like that so cheers nice to be nice there's a little clip coming up now for Brendan so I'll uh, I'll shut up and get on with it. So folks, I've been doing a bit more work on this. This is what I was up talking about. I was going to put some black um, fabric over the back of that, which I still could. And I've put these quite high because I'm figuring, well, if it gets down to like very low minuses, then the higher it is, less affected it's going to be. And I'm hopefully shed's going to work as an heat sink. I can put some stuff down here on the floor. The reason it is so high, I would have gone halfway, but there's a there's a bar across here where I can screw to to make this sort of pretty solid. This side here, I can shut right down. I'm going to try some micro veg in here and uh, other bits and pieces of it winter just to see what, well, experimental more than anything, you know what I mean? That's that um, not so hot, extra hot pepper. Um, that'll stay out here and see how that does. I've got another couple of peppers that I took out of the garden and I've brought two in, well they're all inside at the minute but I've brought, I've got them inside and what I'm doing, I keep two inside for security reasons so that I don't lose them and see how I go. That's the uh, little peach tree. I've got another one in a pot with some uh, other stuff which I'm going to put in the bottom here, see how that goes. That should survive really because, it, well it should. <laughs> fingers crossed everybody keeps the fingers crossed this here is a chewing gum plant it smells it it smells of chewing gum cow gummy as they call it in Switzerland but it does actually smell like you can eat it it's just it's a herb but it's chewing gum and let's say I'm gonna put stuff in here try to get some stuff going over here other thing with this is in spring I can use it hopefully to get some starts going as well and get plenty of stuff going for, for next spring. 
this will easily come out so I can put my tomatoes back in it. And I've got another piece of plastic to go over the front all the way down to the floor. And what I've got to try and work out is how to do it so I can lift it up easily without, well, without a lot of pain. I was looking at some Roman blinds before and I'm trying to rig that up on it, sort of thing. But when I've got that done, I'll give her a look. It won't be today though. But funnily enough, temperatures, it's actually reading 14 on other on my other thermometer, but this is saying 16 here. And this is south, yeah. That's south. And that's west. So it gets pretty good sun. I don't want it to overeat as well, that's the other thing. So if I leave back open, uh, it might sort of lose a bit of heat rather than cooking what's in here. And on worst case scenario, what plants I do have in here, I'll get some uh, bubble wrap and bubble wrap them round. And then hopefully they will survive winter anyway. So that's about that for now. So I just quickly pinned that up, put a board across the top and say I'm going to look at this room and blind idea and see if I can get it to work like that. I might even have it so it runs on the inside. You know a room and blind works, you pull string in it, concertinas up sort of thing. So but I'll have a look at that and that's about that. I've got a little message for Brendan. I'll give you a quick look at what I've got on in um, grow room so far and what's growing on there sort of thing. Some of the stuff that'll be coming out. But I'll, there's a little bit for Brendan on end about a, a saw sharpener who were asking me about. I just did a quick clip on it in garage while I was sort of while I was here. <laughs> Hi Brendan, I just thought I'd get this out just to give you a quick look, so you how it is and what it what it does. Um it's an Eindol, the one I've got. I say it's a very cheap, it's a BT SH 90350. And basically, is you you set your setting on it for your angle and you do half foot blade and then you flip blade over and do other half foot blade. Uh, this is set about, I think it's 15 degrees this one, there is actually a marker on it, but this is set up for a, for a, another blade what I had, this this is just an old blade what I use for ripping down, it's a spare, I just use it for ripping down some firewood or whatever, whatever's really crappy wood you know, stuff with nails in and out like that, but this fits, you, your wheel fits on here so you can adjust it in and out for bigger or smaller wheels which can be for your, your um, your chop saw or your circular saw and basically this lever here pulls back and all you're doing every time you have to set you have to set your length perfectly so that it's coming for a straight cut if you look at that that's not straight cut so basically I have to loosen that and pull it back it's not it's not complicated once you get it set up for one size of wheel I'm not going to cut this wheel because it's not set up for it but and that pulls back and you just skim it basically you just skim it and there's a diamond blade and you just skim it until any marks are out of the blade and that's that. You do every second tooth on one side, you're looking at which side you look doing at and then every, flip it and do every second tooth on the other side. And as I say, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to do it, to do a blade, depending on the size of the blade of course and how finicky it are, but, um, or, or how many teeth it's got. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a right handy tool, saved me a fortune in blades. I mean, I use a lot of crappy wood with nails and stuff in, so I've got a blade which I use for that sort of stuff, you know, even on, well not so much on chop saw, but on um, on my circular saw and on my, on my table saw. My table saw is like an antique thing, I mean it's not uh, it's not anything like that thing what you've got mate, mine's very very old, Swiss model, which uh, again, but it does the job with a sharp blade, it cuts beautiful, you know what I mean. So there you are, Eindol.